Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love Veterinary Hospice. And today I have a special guest with me, Lorraine from Dogtopia. Welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here and I'm excited about our topic today. I know. So Lorraine, you reached out to me maybe two months ago or something like that for maybe a little bit of advice from, from my perspective of boarding um, senior and geriatric uh, dogs at your facilities. And then we just started chatting about this. And, you know, um, my I've, I've always had a struggle myself finding boarding facilities that I can trust with, with my dogs, period. But then with my older dogs, because they've got a lot of times mobility issues, or maybe they're on some medications, uh, or they've got cognitive dysfunction, or they're, they're just fragile, right? And so... Um, so I've always had it a, a bit of a struggle and I also have one of my dogs is a bit, is a bit aggressive. So, uh, let's not go there, but Sam, my girl, Sam last year, uh, she had really bad issues and I, like I was, I didn't go anywhere for a year, which, you know, thankfully because of, because of the pandemic, I, I couldn't, but that allowed me to stay home with her. But otherwise it's very difficult for me to, to travel. And, uh, and I know that a lot of those who are watching are in the same pickle. It's, you've, you've got an older dog and I'm sorry, I just can't trust anybody. And so a lot of times we, we postpone trips and sometimes we have work trips that we can't, uh, you know, can't get out of and we have to do them. So I thought this was a great topic to have and I'm really excited for everybody. And those who are popping on, let us know where you're from. So uh, so let's get started because I want to talk about uh, many things on, on ways that we can safely board our pets, maybe some do's and don'ts, some things to to ask your, uh, vet, your, your boarding facility if there's not a Dogtopia near there. But let's start out with you guys. So tell me, what's Dogtopia? Oh, well, thank you. So Dogtopia is uh, what the leading uh, daycare and boarding provider in North America. So we are pretty special, award-winning franchise, um, and it's an opportunity, a place for pet parents to be able to enroll their pets in daycare, very similar to how our children go to daycare in the sense that they're in a safe environment, um, that we have some some really pretty important differentiators between ourselves and you know some of the independents out there. So some of those things that make us a little different is our highly trained staff. We do have canine coaches in the playroom, uh, completely supervised play. But our, our canine coaches go through extensive training. And their training has been recognized by the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, as well as the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers. So what's pretty cool about that is that our staff can go through uh, different phases of their career and have accreditation already. And that means that, you know, they're in the playrooms, they're learning to uh, speak dog, if you will. You know, dogs are really <laughs> amazing communicators and they really do talk to each other and to yeah. us, but it's important to learn what that language is. So that's one part of why Dogtopia is a little different. Um, obviously, I'm a big proponent of safe supervised play. So our, our playrooms are really safe. Uh, I focus on that. That's my main role at Dogtopia. We have climate controlled playrooms. We also use a rubber flooring in there for safe play. That's, um, very that that's yeah. so good for our mobility dogs. Um, exactly. Okay, so continue because I have so many questions about this. <laughs> Feel free to interrupt. Yeah, so another big part of what we do is, is planned play and planned activities because as we know, dogs really need to have that exercise and that activity and to stay, stay mobile as they get older. So, um, you know, I read a statistic that maybe you can correct me if you think I'm a little off, but somewhere around 50% of dogs might be obese in the United oh. States. And certainly yeah. with the pandemic and the corona pounds that maybe a couple of us, I'm guilty, of put on a little bit at home. Our dogs have done the same thing. Yeah. So the uh, the opportunity for dogs to go to daycare and to stay active, you know, they burn tons more calories just by moving, just by being there with their friends. Um, so that's a really big part of daycare and some of the benefits. And also finding their best friend for life, their BFFF is what we call it at Dogtopia. Dogs are super social and they really do find their friends, their friend groups. Um, they make friends. Really? That like, 
see. Like a playground. Totally. Like, yeah. And we know who, who's friends with whose, and we often reach out to that pet parent and say, hey, are you coming on Thursday? Because I have Scruffy in, and Scruffy really loves to play with your dog. So it's really funny. Oh, it's super so cute. Um, so, you know, first off, the name Dogtopia sounds like where, I, where I'd like to go with my dogs one day at the end. Like so many people ask me, do I believe in heaven? And I'm like, well, I think it's Dogtopia. So uh, you guys have a great name. Now, you. Um, I, you know what? I forgot when I started this, it's not just overnight boarding, but daycare, which I have to tell you, Lorraine, is so is so important, not only for the, the mobility and, and weight loss and things like that, but cognitively, there's there's 50% of dogs over the age of 10 have some level of, you know, like Alzheimer's for dogs, and they need that, that interaction. And especially with a lot of people going back to work, it's uh, it can be, you know, a little bit stressful for them and so if they could have that so now let me ask you you said that you, you deal with a lot the safety what's your role so i have a really unique role and actually i think i have the most gratifying role at, at dogtopia support office i really yeah. love what i i get to focus on the health and safety of the dogs and in our care i mean just last week alone we saw over seventy thousand dogs come through our doors in all of our locations we have 166 open and operating daycares um it, you know, that also board, but we focus a lot on the daycare benefits. Um, so my role, I previously was a veterinarian hospital manager. I coordinated the AHA certification process. So you understand mm -hmm. that very detailed um, and super important certification that veterinarians can have in order to be accredited, meaning yep. they're following all the best practices for health and safety um, and they're taking it very seriously. So then I was a environmental scientist and I focused on the best practices for the health of the environment as well as people. So I take those two things together and I focus on infectious disease control and keeping Dogtopia to be like the cleanest in the industry, right? You don't wanna um, walk in and have any kind of odor. Um, and I'm focused a lot of my time on keeping it clean. That is that is actually pretty fun. I love that. And right for those that don't know what AHA is, you're right. It's it is the best you know gold standard that that hospitals can follow. So it's fantastic that you're bringing that into the daycare industry or you know that that concept. Now you said 167 locations. Six. Yeah. Well, but you know by the end of this week it could be 167. We're we're opening just about one a week. Um, we've got quite a few more planned for the end of this year as well as next year already in the pipeline. So that means we're in 35 states and we're in five different territories in in Canada as well. Canada too. Oh, see, you're almost like, we're in 32 or three states, but only only in the United States. So when I so I'm, I'm on your website on another screen over here. So somebody can go to your website, hit find location, put in their their zip code or postal code, which is super easy, right? Like, yeah. So I can. So that's nice. Let's see if there's one near me. Okay. Yeah. Tell me which one you're close to. Let's see if I'm close to anybody here. Let me see. Oh wait. Oh, of course, this is on the spot, on the flight. So Fort Lauderdale is closest to me, which is. Makes sense because it's way down there by the airport. So yeah. um, nice. And so that was super easy for people to, to find. So you were at least in Florida, which is fantastic. We have a lot of Florida friends here. Um, okay, so let's talk about boarding a senior pet or, you know, or daycare of a senior pet. Hands down, the majority of our, of our dogs that, that we have, that we see, do have some kind of mobility issues. So I like that you said the the rubber floors, which is which is great. Um, what about like rough housing and play, like do we have a little a little fragile of fragile area for our little eggs? Well, I think it's really important to uh, to look at the definition first of what do we call a senior? What does a senior dog really mean to oh, you? Oh boy, you're after my own heart. It's the language we're talking here. So senior for us just means that you've reached a certain age and that can be different depending upon, you know, the uh, breed and size and all of that as an individual. So there's a lot of variability because of the differences of the breeds, you know, from a, from a huge Great Dane all the way down to your teeny tiniest teacup chihuahua, that senior age can be different. However, senior doesn't necessarily mean fragility 
for us, senior just means it's time to really focus on wellness. It's time to focus on quality of life and preserving that quality of life for a longer time, as long as possible. Yeah. Now, geriatric for us really kind of defines that fragility where we're really worried a little bit more about weakness, poor balance, loss of muscle mass, and a decrease in that cognitive function like you're mentioning. So for my dream space, because that's what I preach all the time. It's the, it's the geriatrics, which are so different. These are our fragile, the frailty happens. Right. And so seniors for us is, is wonderful. We'll take yeah. seniors all day long. That just means congratulations. You know, AARP has sent you something in the mail. <laughs> no right. more driving in maybe that's no that's by all. Way, I got AARP and I haven't even hit 50 yet. So they're marketing down. Um, okay, so geriatric. So let's say I come with my 14-year-old girl, Sam. She was a big girl, too. So she was geriatric. So what would, the, what would be kind of the intake process or questions that they would be asking? Perfect. So if you were really needing to board a place, um, the first, there's a couple things. I've got five on my list. So if I get too long-winded, feel free to interrupt me. Okay. But the, the first thing is really socialization. And if you're looking for a place that's open play, you know, you have to really think about what that's like for that senior geriatric dog. Mm -hmm. Is that something they're used to? Is that something they can handle? Have they been able to go through what we call our meet and greet process? So that's sort of the interview. Um, where we are evaluating that dog for safe in daycare. So our boarding facility is going to also be incorporated into our daycare that's open play. So is that something they can even tolerate and, you know, thrive in that situation? So um, going through that evaluation process is important. Um, a part of that evaluation process, we actually require what we call the three plays before a stay. So that just means we want to see your dog come in and have daycare with us at least three times. Mm -hmm. Now, that's because, you know, it doesn't matter if they're having the time of their life, it's going to be new and exciting. And there's that drum, dump of adrenaline. There is that new kind of maybe a little bit of stress that happens because it's so different. Um, and so the three plays before a stay helps us, um, helps that pup sort of learn that we're fun, that mom and dad come home and you get picked up. You're not being abandoned. You know, you're not here forever, um, that you get to have fun and go home so they don't get worried. Uh, that really helps with that adjustment period if a dog is new to daycare but needs to board. So that's one. What do you think okay. about that? I, I love the three uh stays no three plays before the stay and i think it is so important because i remember from one of my boarding facilities here it was just like they they met my dog like the humans met my dogs and and that was it and i'm like okay but they're very different playing and um or 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 staying and 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 it was it was just okay but i went to another place near me before that one and i was actually really nervous because of their policies and something that that really that I, I that that also made me nervous is my one dog who I said is aggressive right so his name is Norin and he only liked my girl Sam because Sam was like like a you know the Eeyore I always say okay you can you know so she, she never riled him up he can't get riled up or else he's gonna get aggressive and so I said listen he needs to board here only him and Sam can play nobody else and so like the people who took them definitely looked like they just graduated high school. And they said, and they said, um, well, we will test him on other dogs. And I said, no, 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 you don't, you don't need to test him on anyone. I'm telling you, he can't ever have friends. And they said, oh, we'll test him on a, on a medium dog. And, it, and I'm like, well, I would hate to know if Sam was a tester, you know, like for, for this. So uh, it, it just made me so nervous. So I really like to see that, that before they stay for a week, they may, it's okay. And so people should plan to do this probably a month or two before the schedule. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, because okay. also needing to make sure you're current on those vaccinations before mm -hmm. you come. And we always like to see some time between the 
vaccination and the stay. So that lets their body develop that immune response and make sure that they're going to have a good response to those vaccines before they play. So that's one part. Absolutely. Another thing like you're mentioning is this, the separation between size and temperament, right? Yes. You okay. have different playrooms associated with their size and their temperament. So that allows the, um, the grumpy sort of older police officer who's, you know, that golden retriever who's just going to make sure all the other pups are in line. You know, we have those personalities. And then you also want to make sure that they're not being bombarded with puppy energy all the time yeah. because that reduces the tolerance and then that creates situations where it's less safe in that playroom um, as escalation energy kind of develops. So, like so these are important questions. The socialization, are, are, do you separate by size and temperament, or is this always just a big open free flow? Um, that's that's one thing to know. Another thing is nap time. So is oh. your senior going to be able to rest? Because we know babies need a lot of sleep. Dogs in general need a lot more sleep than humans. But of course, as they get older into the senior geriatric time frame, they actually need more, right? Right. Do they do. And too much is too much. We need little bits of, of, of energy usage. So that's actually really important. You don't want them overwhelmed because they're going to feel worse the next day. It's, you know, it's, you know, uh, there are so many things. So that's awesome. So there, so is it a couple of hours a day in the playrooms and then, and then have a little. At, at Dogtopia takes a two hour nap in the midday. And this is something. A lot of uh, independents might say, oh, well, we don't believe in that. We're, we're crate free. We're cage free. Um, you know, but and dogs will rest when they want to. And sometimes that's true. But uh, the forced sort of uh, nap time allows for us to do a deep clean sanitation in that playroom. Mm -hmm. So we do it. It, and then we do it at the end of the day, which is really important to me <laughs> and to us, you know, in terms of infectious disease control and cleanliness. Um, but that that nap time is an opportunity to reset the energy. Um, but also our seniors can have additional space in, in nap time as well. That just gets like you're saying, I want to make sure that their immune system doesn't have a drop from not getting enough rest or kind of special me time. Right. <laughs> And then we run into other concerns if their immune system's a little stressed out. They need to they need to introvert also every now and then. So that <laughs> I could yeah. I could use a nap time and but I mean I used to get that when I was I, I remember nap time when I was a kid in in like kindergarten or something like that. So that's super important. Oh, I have my friend from Mexico City is on the line. <laughs> Fun. Um, all right. So that was I think two. You said you had five things. So I do. Yeah, that was actually three. So I think yeah. I've got, we've got socialization, separation, yeah. time. So now we've got medication tracking and uh -huh. you know, heard Dogtopia or dog meal plan at Dogtopia. So medication tracking means that we will make sure that however many medications or supplements your dog comes with, we can administer on time. As long as it's during, you know, our, our, hours of, of, of someone there being there, but yeah. also, and the one thing we don't do is we don't do injectable medication. Okay. So I was going to ask that. I was going to let you finish. It's because if there's a, uh, uh, usually it's diabetic animals, so they yeah. should not. Okay. So not injectable, but pills. Yes, we absolutely can do that. Um, and of course, there's so many reasons why injectables are a little bit more difficult for a, a dog boarding facility. But and and that would probably be better suited at medical boarding at something for like sure. a veterinary. So we will also make sure your senior has got their specific food. Now, I think it's really important that you bring what, what they're used to because we don't really recommend a dietary change for anyone. We will always have a high quality in-house food. Um, that's very important to us, but keeping your dog on their food is, is ideal. So we make all those customizations for dogs while we're with us and make sure that's part of the plan wherever you need to board a senior dog. Um, and then lastly is comforts from home. So we welcome people to bring in their, their special bedding. Um, it's, it's, we do ask that it's small enough to fit, you know, if you have a large dog, that it's something that we can wash if we need to or have a removable cover. 
Um, that's very nice because we do want to make sure things get home clean. Um, but, but we think it's important that dogs have those comforts, that sense of um, home with them, and that helps kind of let them rest and, and uh, enjoy their stay. So that's good to know because there are a lot of boarding facilities that say bring them and all they do is put them in a garbage bag with the name of the pet on them and stick them in storage until they're picked up again. So it's, you know, it, even... oh yeah, they do that. So, and it's sad because um, there's been studies, Lorraine, that say there, uh, uh, it was a few years ago, what they did is they took um, a number of, of dogs. I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos where they train them to sit still through a CT scan. And so they put them in the CT machine and they presented them different smells. One was of their owner, one was of a, of a, a dog they knew, one was of a dog they didn't know, and one was like a cat or something like that. And uh, the, the smell that triggered their happy centers of their brain was their owner, was the number one. That's so sweet. I mean, it's I so can just, dog feeling comforted with that that's nice yes. i mean we all have something where we're like that we smell and we're like oh, they do the same thing and so that smell was their number one smell their number two smell that lit their pleasure zone was a dog they knew so they're so they're little friends right so that that was how nice is that so i always suggest if your pet is being boarded or going in for a, a surgery for the day or something like that, bring a shirt with them, leave it in the cage, you know, so that way they can, the little kitty cat can lay on it or something like that. So, um, so I think that's fantastic that you guys encourage that because it's, it, it will help, uh, you know, the community there if there's more relaxed and, and happy dogs. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So and it's great to also bring, I can't stress enough. I would definitely have my own foods there. And I usually like Ziploc them into like Monday, Tuesday. Is that like, is that good to do? Absolutely. We definitely prefer that. The, the more communication and the more labeling that's done before you arrive is so much easier for our team, okay. especially during busy boarding seasons. And yes. Good, 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 good. Cause that's, cause I'm a little obsessive and I, and I make all my little packs up and stuff like that. So I'm trying to think here about the, uh, uh, how long has been your longest person to board there or dog to board there? Do you have any like We actually stories? have, yeah, a couple stories where we become the pet. So might have a situation where uh, the pet parent is no longer able to care for that dog. It's very rare. I think it's only happened a, once or twice. Mm -hmm. um, but we have had a long-term boarding dog become a, a family member of Dogtopia, which was actually a good thing in the long run. Um, but in general, you know, the longer boarding time frames are usually, you know, most of the time it's a long holiday weekend. During the summer, we'll get a week, a week or two. Um, some of our East Coast locations really, and even the West Coast, I shouldn't say that, it's just one side or the other. Um, we, we service a lot of military families and, and you know, government employees and things and even hospital workers COVID, uh, response that really needed our care during that time where their dogs felt happy to be with us, happy to be with their friends. Our canine coaches develop a very strong personal relationship and it, it really emotional relationship with the dogs in their care. So um, that was just really heartwarming for us to be able to support some of those essential workers doing during this last year and this ongoing process we're still in. Um, so we, we have had a couple long-term, but in general, that's not really the, yeah, uh, usually, the worst thing. <laughs> usually, wait. and I've got some pictures to show. This is my favorite one to show. <laughs> of a little guy, but what is going on? Oh, look, at, I'm the worst at this. Hold on, let me hide this one. What's going on here with the bubbles? Yeah, so that's part of our planned activities. And actually those are bacon bubbles. They what? smell like bacon. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. The dogs think it is the best thing ever. And, and of course it's just a fun activity that we have. I have peanut butter, bacon, um, you know, so it's, it's a fun activity. I I had no idea there's bubbles that smell like bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I need to write these down. Oh my gosh, that is just amazing. And look at this little guy, look at this little squirt here. Oh, I love yeah. it. <laughs> They're so cute. Now, do you, little gray muzzle. Um, and then one more that, 
could be old or could be young. I don't know. Cause these guys look a little old when they're young too. Um, right. Now something that I struggle with, which I don't know if I like or dislike <laughs> because uh, when I boarded some of my pets in, in facilities where they have cameras to watch, I sometimes am like, Oh, look at them sleeping or not sleep or play. Like, so sometimes I have to not look myself because I start to guilt myself that they're that they're sleeping, but they're just sleeping, right? So do you can can they can the owners live stream in or see pictures or videos? Thank you. I'm glad that I'm a big believer in that open transparency. So pet parents oh, yes. should be able to see what's going on. That's probably something to look for if you do need to board your dog. Um, there there are times where we turn it off for nap time because that's when we're in there cleaning and that we put on some calming music and turn the lights down and we go in and clean the, the room quietly. Um, but that that's a small portion. It doesn't take very long for us to go through that process while they're napping. But the, the webcams are very important. It's funny. We can... Um, we did some analytics on our data and could see that that our pet parents log in and watch for a long period of time. <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, I, I'm obsessed with watching. So that's, I think they're fantastic, though, to have so that way you just, you know, you're not concerned or something like that. But, um, you know, there were some times where I was like, oh, my girl, she's, you know, sitting there. But uh, and then I would not be on my vacation. So as long as you right. keep comfort and not take you away from your vacation, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I, I, now, if somebody, if there's not a Dogtopia near, near them and they need to find a daycare or boarding facility, um, I would love to talk to some about what are some of the points to look for. And you've already mentioned actually two that, that I, well, actually more than two, but um, one is that you, that you want a longer period of time between vaccination and boarding. And I, I just want to encourage that. And, and I don't know if you like recognize that you said that because so many people will get their dog vaccinated like two days before they're boarding. It's doing nothing really. That's, it's not, it's not enough. And your dog may be a carrier because they, aren't that and then they spread it around so i think that's fantastic that you that you want them to have it done before right we have a policy of 48 hours at a minimum but i really yeah. prefer 10 days even two weeks is ideal so we two weeks is ideal that because it's really important i think that you have some prolonged immunity and who knows for certain you know with certain dogs and there's a very individual immune response to vaccines but um you probably have some coverage if it's an older dog that's had a good history of vaccination um but certainly uh we're always looking for good ways to help us control canine cough and the upper respiratory infections yeah. um but as long as we have dogs playing together and we have asymmetric asymptomatic dogs who could be carriers of it, we might always have the common doggy cold that gets passed around daycare. But and when um, you're so that's, older, that's, that's it could be a little bit worse, you know? So just like us older humans, we don't want them to get a flu. Same thing. So right. what else what else can you recommend our friends here if they're looking for a boarding facility? Like some telltale signs of like either great or uh uh you know, I'm a big believer in using all your senses. You know, you walk in and you get a sense and, and intuitively as well, you know, listen to your messages. But I think that, you know, using your sense of nose and sense of smell, what does the facility look like? How well are they communicating with you and how knowledgeable is their team on common canine things, whether it's a health concern or behavior abilities to understand, you know, how dogs interact with each other. Um, and then how good are they going to be at responding to you if you have questions and uh, any concerns? Do you have an emergency contact? I think that's one of our biggest challenges in boarding is, and that's on the pet parent side, not necessarily on the boarding facility, but do they even ask for an emergency contact? Uh, we really, as a boarding facility uh, and daycare place, want to make sure that if there's a reason for your dog that needs to go home, because we're not veterinarians, you know, we're not a medical facility. Do you have someone who's responsible that would be willing to come pick up? That's a real big part of what I'd like to make sure, you know, pet parents do, but also facilities. That's a tricky one, Lorraine, because let's say I, I don't have friends <laughs> and, and I wanted to go on vacation, right? What if my dog, like, 
if to move him to another, like a veterinary clinic, I'd have to arrange a little doggy taxi. Uh, yes. Well, we, we actually will provide the transportation, but what, which is, is fine. It, but the, the real question is, have you talked to your vet hospital? Will they accept your dog in your absence? Um, you know, what is that veterinarian client and patient relationship like, right? And, and how, how does Dogtopia fit in the middle of that? So when you, uh, when you board with us, you fill out the enrollment form and you, you're signing an agreement that we have the ability in your absence to care for your dog, especially in case of an emergency. Um, and so sometimes I still find that uh, veterinarians question that, you know, or you know, maybe unless they get a credit card from mom and dad aren't going to provide care. But so we're always willing to work with that vet. Um, but if you don't have an emergency contact who's responsible, then we do ask that you help us arrange that veterinarian contact. That's important. And, you know, sadly, uh, I think everybody's heard me say this statistic way too many times, but 50% of pets uh, have not been to their regular veterinarian in their last year of life. And so uh, it, and it's really sad. So especially before you're going somewhere, have them fully checked out because there could be some underlying problems that we didn't even know about, uh, you know, and, and things can happen all of a sudden has nothing to do with the place they're at. Things can happen, but it's really good to make sure that there isn't anything underlying that would also maybe not be a good idea to board. And I know that you and I were talking about um, heart failure and somebody had asked about this. And, and this one, I'm going to, now there's heart disease and there's heart failure. So if your dog has a type of heart disease, so my, my Doberman, he had um, dilated cardiomyopathy, so big floppy heart. And when he was not in heart failure, I would have been comfortable in boarding somewhere, playing or whatever, and getting his pills that he needed throughout the day. But once his sickness got to a point where his respiration was challenged, so he was breathing harder, any time of those, I would, I personally would discourage as a veterinarian that they're boarded at like an open play facility or somewhere where there's not 24 seven watching. And so any respiratory distress, so if your dog has laryngeal paralysis, I, I, I would probably discourage that or end stage heart disease or you know, metastasis of cancer or something like that. And best then to, to find a good veterinary hospital that can provide, like you said, the medical, the medical boarding because we don't want them worked up. Like they need to be calm and restful and somebody can really watch how, you know, uh, how they're breathing and doing. So that I think is really, uh, is really important. Absolutely. Um, well, my main reason for reaching out to you a couple months ago, and it was such a joy to find you, and it was such a wonderful resource for us to get really educated on the senior dog and the stages leading to geriatric stages. Um, but we put together with your help and your inspiration, the senior dog questionnaire. So this is a tool for our locations to be able to ask those questions about mobility, vision loss, hearing loss, muscle, you know, uh, reduction, that kind of thing, cognitive ability, social ability, um, but underlying health concerns. And right. a scoring process so that we can kind of assess whether or not your, your dog is sort of reaching that point where we're too far into the geriatric stages for safe boarding. So then you have to look at other alternatives, whether that's in home care or with your veterinarian. I, yes. And I, you know, not to, not to say that's why I like you guys, but it shows your integrity. It shows that you care. The fact that you actually reached out and, and, and asked me for some advice. I've never had any other uh, uh, daycare or boarding facility ever do that. And I wish they would because these guys are little, are little fragile eggs. And we you know when my, a lot, like when Duncan, my Doberman it, with his heart failure, I had to always have that in in home in home care, and I just I found a wonderful, wonderful pet sitter. Lean on Jean is her is her Facebook page, and I now fly her. I I've flown her where I, when I moved into my you know town to watch my animals because it was it was actually cheaper because I had so many with so many medications and everything else that I'm like oh, and then she could water my plants too while she was at it, but. Um, 
But I think the fact that you guys actually considered this is is telling and it's important. And yeah. I, your collaboration, it was really wonderful. Oh no, I love it. Now what about, just a quick question on, what if they come with harnesses or like the, the uh, halos, if they've got vision loss, you let them keep them on? Not necessarily. So in open play, what I'm always worried about is the attractive nuisance. And we do have, um, so if, if there's other things like that that need to happen, we might have to reconsider or look at whether or not maybe staying in our suite is appropriate or finding um, an alternative. So we do prefer that dogs have, um, if they're brachycelephic breeds, you know, a harness on um, or a Dogtopia collar, because we do use collars in the playroom to help us with redirection and collar desensitization and training. Um, but when it comes to other contraptions and things like that, we, we're a little hesitant, but it's always something that I'm willing to look at and address. No, I, you know, I think you make a very good point. Like the halos for the vision. I could see another dog be like, Bruh! and, and running off with it. So that's actually a, a really good idea. Um, and uh, I was looking at daycare, boarding, spa. Mm -hmm. So so they get, mine always got bathed before they came home because I don't know what they were playing in and, uh, and, and causing havoc. And this is, this is awesome. So 30, 35 states, you said? Yeah, so far 35 states um, and lots of locations. I've been with the company going on close to six years now. So when I started, there was only about 28 locations and we've really just understood the pet services industry now. It's just grown leaps and bounds. It's continuing to be big, but, but um, and partly like we were talking about the AHA certification process, we've created our own certification for the entire industry called Top Dog. So Top oh. Dog walk through a very similar process that you would go through to become an AHA certified veterinarian. It's gonna be the best practices, the gold standard in dog daycare. So um, yeah, we're, we're in lots of locations and uh, we, we continue to be in more and more. It's keeping me very busy. Well, I, I, love, I love that idea, the little top dog. So just a few people that have written in, Constance said before her girl passed away, she was at the office uh, like right before and she can't imagine not bringing her back. I agree, Constance. I like, but so many people, either it's hard to get them in because they're, you know, big and they've got mobility issues or anxious or something like that. So no judgment. That's when I say try to find a mobile veterinarian that can come and help you. Um, hi, Danny from New Jersey. And then Lynn says there's no Dogtopia uh, near her, but is there another place you could recommend? Uh, or uh, almost like the top dog certification or something like that, where they can, like, what should they look for for trust? Now you said that your people are certified uh, or your your process is certified by the, the, the training association. That's a good one. That's true. So you can always reach out to them for a good connection in your neighborhood. I'm really curious, Lynn, where you are, because I might be able to find out if we're building one near, near nearby. Yeah, um, Lynn, you gotta put in your zip code. Uh, look, I, I'm not so good at memorizing zip codes, but certainly city. No, I'm gonna, I've got it up over here. I'll look. Oh, but oh, you know it's coming. Perfect. Thank you. Um, but of course, I think that reaching out to your veterinarian is a good idea. I think that would be my first step if I didn't have a Dogtopia nearby, because I know when I was a vet tech and an office manager, I either did it on the side myself for our special clients, or I knew people who did, who were very well qualified to look for health concerns. And, you know, of course, we could do things like insulin injections if we needed to. So that would probably be my first step. Oh, yeah. Florida. Um, is that East Coast? That's, that's near, that's north of Tampa, Newport Ritchie, if I'm not mistaken, right, Lynn? I think that's uh, Newport Ritchie's uh, on west side. Not a lot in Florida, then. so <laughs> maybe not in great driving area for, for uh, well, so. right, maybe that's it. Even our Fort Lauderdale is a little south for me. I'd like one in Palm Beach, but um, listen, you actually gave a better answer than I did. I never, <laughs> right, your veterinarian may, may have an option. I, you know, when I worked in general practice, I, um, uh, our, our boarding wasn't, wasn't fantastic. It was, it was what it was. It was runs. It was, you know, I, I walked, I started before I became a vet, I worked in a, in the kennel. So it was, you know, four walks a day, quick to pee or poop, come in like that was it. So it might be your only option and that's, and that's nothing wrong with that, but I really like the, you know, interaction and things like that, or the, the cages are small. These are vet hospitals that don't have the, 
the large facilities or the outside areas. So, so they may they may be able to recommend one. But you brought up a very good point that there might be technicians um, when in in their area that that will be available to do that. And I and I've had many technicians when I lecture, they all come up to me and they say, I want to get into hospice. What can I do? And I said, the first thing is to look into doing this on your own and respite care, you know, in home sitting and things like that, because we it's it can be so much more helpful to families. And then Tammy said she was able to work from home when it uh, when it was Zeus's time, which that was with me with my girl Sam. It's, it's the you know the only good thing about the last year was that I was I was home with her. All right, so Lorraine, what did I forget to ask you? Because we covered a lot: socialization, medication, things from home. My favorite subject. <laughs> I know this is this is this is my favorite subject as well. And I again, I really appreciate that that you guys reached out to get some advice that you that you care enough that, about our old guys 30 percent of 30 percent of dogs are in their double digits which is a lot of them so and they're the ones that kind of need the little tlc the extra bits so i think that's i think that's amazing all right if there was any other questions anybody can pop them in there uh and then and i'll and i'll answer them if, if we've got any uh any so so sorry how many places in canada did you say because we do have some people watching in canada um east coast and west coast so we've got toronto we've got you know all the way over on the other side as well okay good i have some good friends in toronto so i will definitely let them know about this as well all right well if there's any other questions i'll answer them throughout the week but i just want to say thank you so much again lorraine this has been so much fun and a little different topic, but I think very important. And you know what? The holidays are going to be here before we know it. And places like yours get booked up also. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that because it's always hard when we get those last minute requests because we never want to turn away, especially our longtime daycare dogs that need to board. We want those reservations early and we want to make sure you've had time to go to your vet and make sure you're updated and all that. So plan ahead. You're right. <laughs> I, it's so true. So that's, I mean, Thanksgiving is, and even now everybody's probably going to go somewhere this year. So, <laughs> so definitely think about that in advance. All right. Well, thank you again. And thank you for all that are watching and love up on your green muzzles for me till next time. Bye guys.